It's Secrets Week on an all-new Oz. Are you keeping a secret? Everyone has something they don't want to share. Married couples who are holding back come clean. I just really think that he's hiding something. I'm checking his debit cards. Who are you buying this stuff for? So, Michael, is there a truth you might want to reveal to your wife? If you or someone you love is keeping a health secret, it can not only affect your relationship, but your body. Coming up next on Dr. Oz. Welcome to the show, everybody. Lots of good stuff today. Shh, keep really quiet. Come closer, come closer. Are you keeping a secret? Be honest. Everyone has something they don't want to share, but sometimes if you or someone you love is keeping a health secret, it can not only affect your relationship, but your body. So today, health secrets revealed for the very first time right here, right now. Let's start with married couple, Medani and Michael, who are joining us. Now here's the story. Medani thinks Michael, her husband, is keeping a health secret. Welcome to the show. Hi. Michael, we'll see if you're smiling in a few minutes. So why do you think he's keeping a health secret? Well, we've been together, I met him when I was 16. We've been together, today's our 11 year anniversary. Well, congratulations. Yeah, That's time. wonderful. I know him very well, and I just really think that he's hiding something. Hmm. I normally will make him breakfast and lunch. I'm diabetic. I got diabetes when I, a couple of months after I met him. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to keep both of us healthy. So usually I make him breakfast, I make him lunch, and I'll find the lunch in the car, or I'll find bags in the back of the car, and I'll ask him what's going on. Did you eat the lunch? Yeah. Why is there bags in the back of the car? I'm checking his debit card sometimes when I'm paying bills. I'm like, who are you buying this stuff for? So why are you concerned about his health? I understand your issues. Because he has high cholesterol. Mm. And I don't want him to get on medication. I want him to stay healthy. So Michael, are you ready to come clean today? Is there a truth you might want to reveal to your wife? Uh, yes, there, there's a truth I would like to reveal to you, mate. Um, you know how you come home and you know, you come home from work and you cook dinner and you make me lunch every night so I have something to take to work with me every day. Um, I've been not eating your lunch. I've been leaving it in the car. I've been throwing it away. I've so been, you're throwing the food away? Yes. And what are you eating? Fast food. Um, I eat fast food five times a week just because it tastes so good. <laughs> so you're saying what I cook does not taste good? It's, it's just, the fast food tastes so good. <laughs> so you're saying what I cook does not taste good? Well, like since you're cooking a little more healthier now, it's just not appealing to me more. It doesn't taste as good as it used to taste. And honestly, I'm like, I can just go to a fast food place. And waste and money. Maybe, maybe I should help you, Michael. <laughs> I get up out a little bit. So, so you're I, wasting money eating fast food. So do, yes. do you worry about your cholesterol? You know, Dr. Oz, I do worry about my cholesterol, but you know, I figure I'm young. You know, I have 30, 40 years to go, and you know, I can worry about it five years down the road and be okay. But then you may be on medicine. I know. I, like me. I don't know what to say. So here's the thing: I can tell you guys care about each other. It's a good thing to fight over health. I know it's obviously a little uncomfortable right now, but it's, it's of the topics you could be irritated with each other about it matters. You're young now, mm -hmm. but the inside of your body will start rusting with bad cholesterol. So what your wife is doing for you, because she loves you so darn much, mm -hmm. is give you a hard time today instead of 10 years from now when you're on meds or 30 years from now when you need an operation that you can't get out of. But because you care about each other a lot, I'd rather not focus so much on the food, and I'd focus on the relationship first. Because the honesty issue is where we're gonna start this off. So I've asked someone to join me, psychotherapist Dr. Jen Mann, who deals with these issues regularly, and every week on VH1's Couples Therapy. Come on over, guys. Take a little room for her. So Dr. Jen, how common is this for folks to keep secrets from each other, even if they love each other dearly? Well, there's a big difference between a secret and privacy. A secret is, I have a Facebook account that you don't know about. Privacy is one of those hemorrhoids are really acting up. I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> and in this instance, Michael's situation, your intentions are not bad. You're not being malicious. I think you just don't know how to handle this. And I think that, like you said, this is a couple's issue. This is about a lack of communication. And the problem here is that you guys aren't learning how to do conflict resolution. And 
couples have to know how to do that. You're just avoiding it. You're hiding the food, you're buying the food, you're sneaking around. So we have to put an end to that so you guys can communicate and actually work through these conflicts. Dr. Jen, if they were in your office, pretend they are right now, Okay. what would you tell them? And I want folks at home to think about this because you know, it's one thing if you're trying to hide duplicitously from each other, mm -hmm. but if you're making these decisions and ideally wouldn't be open, these can be hugely helpful tips. Well, the first thing I want to know is, why are you not being honest with her? What's holding you back? What's preventing you from being forthcoming? I just feel like, you know, if, if I tell her the truth, I know she's going to be upset at me. You know, she always tells me, you know, I'm the healthy parent. I have diabetes. You know, you got to be here for the kids. You got to be here for the girls. You got to be here for the family. And it's just, a, you know, just a thought of just disappointing her. With, so you're afraid of letting her down. Yes. You're afraid of her being upset. Yes. And the, the irony is that her making you all this food, putting the effort into putting the time, putting the money over time, you now have a wife that's far more upset than had you gone to her when this first started and said, you know, I don't think that, that I can really eat quite this healthy. What should we do? Let's mm -hmm. talk about this. Let's work through this. Mm -hmm. I have a feeling that you're more aggressive with him than you may realize. I see a lot of passion in you, and it, hey, it takes one to know one, sister. Like, <laughs> I get it. And you really want him to be healthy, and I get that. I'm vegan, like, I get that. But you're not leaving him the room to communicate with you. And when you're that intense, it scares guys away. Like, they want to please us, especially good men. They want to please their woman. And what you need to do is open the door for communication. You know, I'd really like to see the two of you working together. I would like to see for you to pull out of his food stuff, for you to, to not be nagging him. And look, I get it. I can nag with the best of them. But we need to inspire our men. When we nag, right, Dr. Oz, right. men are like, whoa, I don't want, like, she's not, you're not my mom. And they right. rebel against us. What I like to see you do is at the beginning of each meal, ask yourself, how do I want to feel at the end of this meal? Mm -hmm. And then what I want for you to do is tune in. Take a moment after you're done eating and really sit and think about how does your stomach feel? How does your energy feel? How does your digestion feel? All that sort of stuff. And ask yourself, how do I feel? I have a feeling after a fast food meal, mm -hmm. you're probably feeling sluggish. Your energy's mm -hmm. not great. If you really listen to your body, your body responds well to healthy foods. Mm -hmm. You guys, you've gone too extreme. You've told him what his goals are. Instead of saying, hey, what are your goals? I know we both want to live a long time. I know we want to eat healthy. Let's work together. What, what's doable for you? We need to eat fun foods. Then on paper, and I'm sure you'd be the first to say this, on paper, eating a perfect clean diet, yeah, that's great. You'll live a million years, but It'll it's feel not, like you live a million years. Still. Right, but it's not the <laughs> emotional reality of our relationship with food. Our emotional relationship with food is that we want to have those fun foods. We want to have a variety of foods. So if fast food is... 10% of your diet, even 20% of your diet. You can get those needs met, but it doesn't have to be all of it. I love these tips. What do you guys think? Um, I love it. Um, you know, I'm gonna try my best to kind of change my eating habits. It's not about that, that's not what she's saying. Mm -hmm. She's saying you gotta talk about this a little differently. It's not We're about- together. Yeah, the two of you. You know what, give me a kiss, because she's gonna take you out otherwise. And then <laughs> I'm trying to help you, I'm trying to protect you. <laughs> I think I will maybe cut back some more when trying to be so aggressive and trying to force him yeah. to eat what I'm making. Exactly. I recently lost 40 pounds. Good for and you. And for me, it's like I really need to lose weight to stay healthy. And I look at it like he eats yeah. all this stuff and he's, you know, maintaining his weight. And I'm trying, yeah. honestly, that's like, that's to just, try to get to it. That's just for now. But what you just said is a much better way of doing it. If you tell him, honey, I need your help in order for me to lose the weight so we can do it together, there's no way he'd fight to the end of the world to make that happen. All right, thank you guys. Yeah, thank you. Wonderful you. tips. Now, let's turn to a very different kind of health seeker. This was a focus on health seekers today. We received this video from Candace, who asked me to help reveal her big secret right here in the studio. Hi, Dr. Oz. My name is Candace, and I'm about halfway through my pregnancy. We have a big secret though. We don't know the gender of our baby. We would love to come on your show and to figure it out and have a big gender reveal. So what are you, team pink or team blue? So Candace, her, her husband Danny and their four-year-old daughter Vienna and all their family and friends are here, and lots of them, for the big secret reveal. Hi Vienna, you're so cute. Thank you. <laughs> so you want a little baby brother or sister? Twins. You want <laughs> There's a, I hope she has an agent. That is cute. <laughs> right. So, any predictions? Thoughts? Boy. Do y'all think it's a boy? Boy. Why do you guys think it's a boy? Why is it a boy? 
Because um, they have a daughter and they want a boy. I don't know if that works that way. Kenzie, <laughs> <laughs> so why is it so important for you to find out the, the, the sex of your child? Well, with Vienna, uh, we kind of started a family tradition of not finding out. We waited till we were in the delivery room and to announce to everybody. And um, we had another daughter that we lost. She was actually a stillborn. So we didn't find out with her either. So after this, we just wanted like, I just feel like it was exciting to just do something new with my whole family. So we had the gender of the baby in an envelope in our car. And we were going to do some, something special with the family, some kind of gender reveal. We weren't exactly sure what. But when this opportunity came up, we thought, like, how much more fun and exciting is it to do it on TV with Dr. Oz and our, all of our friends and family here? Well, thankfully, I have the results right here, the gender reveal. All right. Are you guys ready? ready? Yeah. Yes. Oh. Sex of your next child is a... Are you happy? You okay with that? She's got a sister. I got a little present for you. Are you guys happy? Everybody was wrong. Everybody, you guys were all wrong, but when she comes, you'll be ready. There you are. Are you happy? Thank you, yes. Congratulations. Thank you. We'll be right back. Many of you use it every day to help clear your skin. Now, the FDA is issuing a warning regarding potential side effects, severe allergic reactions to key ingredients, over-the-counter acne medications, what you need to know, coming up next. Clutter can cause stress, chaos, and obesity. It's time to clear out the clutter and feel good again. See how a simple soda cap or even a clothespin can change your life. All new Oz. That's coming up tomorrow. In the medical spotlight, the FDA is calling into question the safety of common products you may use every day. CBS News medical contributor Dr. Holly Phillips is here. Now, for get everyone on the same page, the FDA singled out products with benzoyl peroxide and salicylic acid, two key ingredients that have been used for acne for decades. So Dr. Phillips, why is the FDA concerned about these now? You know, Dr. Oz, generally with these products, when we see side effects, they're mild, just maybe some dry skin, some flakiness. Well, the FDA has also been getting reports of more serious adverse reactions, even some life-threatening allergic reactions. So really, it's just a reminder that even though the drugs are available over the counter without a prescription, there are still serious drugs that can have serious side effects. So I got to tell you, I read the warning, and I wanted to know if there's actually an increase of these reactions that we're talking about. Uh, and in fact, there has been a dramatic increase of allergic reactions. So if you can, explain the difference between the typical reactions that we might think would come from these creams or ointments and mm -hmm. these more mm -hmm. allergic issues that the FDA is worried about. Sure. Well, Dr. Oz, we can actually use this picture to kind of demonstrate. This is a common adverse reaction here in the top picture. Uh, we call it a contact dermatitis. It only involves the skin. And you can even appreciate on the picture there's some dryness. Clearly the skin is irritated. There's some peeling and redness and a little bit of swelling. Well, here on the bottom picture, this is what the FDA is warning about. It's a serious adverse reaction. It's an allergic reaction that involves the entire system, not just the skin, something we also see with food allergies. You see big swelling here, big hives, and a lot of sensitivity. You can even get itchy throat and trouble breathing and wheezing, really serious side effects. And those serious effects are the ones that make us concerned versus the garden variety adverse effects. Sure. So these f products are an over-the-counter ointments and mm -hmm. products. So uh, how active are they? How much of a variation is there between products? You know what? There are a lot of different potencies available. So if you're going to buy them, make sure you're looking at the labels to see what strength you're getting. Benzoyl peroxide comes up to about 10% in strength, uh, and the salicylic acid goes up to about 2%. My advice is to start low, go slow. So start with a low dosage of benzoyl peroxide, maybe the 2.5%, and with salicylic acid, about 0.5%. 5%, and then increase it gradually if you're not having side effects. Uh, but just to remind people exactly how potent these things are, if you look at this towel, maybe some women out there have even had staining like this on their towels or bed sheets or uh, even um, pillowcases. This is from benzoyl peroxide. I'll see that pretty yeah, well. it's actually strong enough to bleach fabric, so it's a real medicine. 
So just to be clear, the FDA is not requiring new labeling at, at this time, but it's encouraging manufacturers to include directions for sensitivity testing so we can actually tell them what's going on. So how are they going to know, the average person, what an allergic reaction is? You know, well, the, the FDA actually isn't entirely clear whether the allergic reactions are to the active ingredients, uh, that's salicylic acid and benzoyl peroxide, or whether the reactions are to the inactive ingredients. Those are things like preservatives or parabens. And parabens give cream their sort of consistency and thickness. Or it could be a combination of both. The good news, though, is that these very serious reactions are relatively rare. We reached out to the Personal Care Products Council and they said in part, we recognize that there are sensitive populations who may be allergic to certain ingredients. Those customers should alert the manufacturer to help identify ingredients found on the label. So we're hearing the same thing for everybody. They need some of our advice, some of our feedback. Now that you know the difference between the garden variety adverse reactions and these more allergic issues. So what can women watching right now do uh, if they think they may have an allergic issue. Is there a test they can do to see if something's going to cause a problem with them? Yeah, absolutely. They, they can test themselves and they should. Um, you know, my advice is to test the product for about two weeks before you give yourself the all clear. And you do that by taking just a tiny dab and putting it right in front of your ear here. Now, some women try to test on the inside of their wrist or the back of the hand, but the skin right in front of the ear is a better indicator of how the skin on your face will be. And, of course, you're looking for swelling, redness, or any irritation. Any of those alternative secrets if you want to avoid taking the products at all? Well, there <laughs> are. You know what, um, for tea tree oil is a natural uh, product that can be helpful for mild acne. Um, particularly for women as we age, sometimes acne is caused by hormonal imbalances. Your doctor might want to give you a medication to rebalance those hormones. And of course, there are a lot of prescription alternatives. There's prescription creams and laser treatments. The over-the-counter products aren't the only things we have. Thanks for joining us. I'll be right back. Coming up next, do you suffer from elevator phobia or the fear of being trapped in one? Don't let it hold you back from going where you need to go. Overcome your panic. Challenge fearful thoughts with easy tricks before doing anything frightening. Coming up next. Welcome back. If you have a phobia that you wish you could overcome, Today, we're going to show you exactly how. We'll just take a look at how Lisa's phobia is holding her back. Since I was a very young girl, I've been afraid of elevators. They terrify me. Getting into one, I feel as though my heart starts to race. It's just the whole idea of getting into a small little box. It feels so confined in there. My biggest fear is, what if I get stuck? just want the elevator doors to open, and each second feels like an eternity. And then when it finally does, I feel like this big, great sense of relief come over me. I avoid taking the elevator at all costs. When I stay at hotels, I always must be on the first floor or the ground level. And if by any chance it's on like the second or third floor, then I have to take the steps. Even when I'm in the mall, I always look for the escalator. In this day and age, you really can't travel without going on an elevator, so I would give anything to conquer my fear of elevators. Joining me is psychologist Dr. Todd Farchioni. He's the director of the Boston University Program for Panic Disorder and Phobias. Lisa's ruining us with that elevator phobia of yours. How has this changed your life? How has it held you back? Well, it kind of just limits me to, you know, not being able to travel as much and stay at the hotels that my children and my husband want to stay at, you know, with beautiful views. And I'm always looking for the first level of the ground floor. And it's kind of not fair to them as well. They have to put up with it. So what do you feel inside your body when you have the, the fear of the elevator? Well, my heart begins to beat and race a little bit and my knees kind of get weak and um, I just feel that feeling like I, you know, like I want to pass out sometimes. And, and you can make it happen today? <sighs> no, no. Time for change? Yeah, I, I want to confront it, I do. I want to confront it and conquer it. So Todd, start us off. For everybody, whether you have an elevator phobia or something else you're worried about, something that's frightening you, what should we do to start the process? Public speaking, bridges, there's so many ones that I've heard from the audience about. Right. Well, in confronting the thing that we're afraid of, one of the first steps in overcoming a phobia or a fear would be to change the way that we respond to the thing that we're afraid of. So a lot of times as we approach the thing that we're afraid of, we start to close up, we start to change our posture and almost approach it in a very, yeah, in a very sort of timid way. We have the frown on our face. It's, it's frightening to us. And so it's, it's producing a lot of behaviors. So instead what we wanna do is something different, something opposite to that. 
And one of the things that uh, I think can be useful to people as they enter something that they're afraid of is to uh, strike a pose that's different than what uh, what they feel inside, right? So the this fear is, this, this is, is what you feel like. <laughs> like, this, like this. Right, right, right. right. I just take the superpower pose. That's it. Yeah, the Superman pose, right? right. <laughs> you look like Superwoman now. There we go. And then deep breathing also, because I know we all, sh I shallow breath, I, you probably do too. Yes, well, I, I don't breathe at all. I pray a lot. Pray a lot. Pray a lot. Right, right. So we want to eliminate those types of behaviors. And a lot of times people hold their breath, which causes a lot of the physical symptoms that they're experiencing, or they take deep breaths, you know, big breaths. <gasps> and they're hyperventilating, essentially. So instead, we want to try to calm the breathing a little bit, be okay with the fear, but behaviorally, um, we want to change the way that we, we respond. Pump the chest out, you know, go into it with a smile on our face, you know, because this thing is not really dangerous and the behaviors have to reflect that. Right. Okay. So how do you challenge those fearful thoughts? The thoughts that Lisa mentioned, all the ones that many of us have had, will that fall, will I get stuck, you know, all those things that could happen. Right, well, I think there's a few questions you can ask yourself. First, you can say, what evidence do I have for the thing that I'm fearing or the fearful thought that I have, right? So what evidence do you have that uh, you're gonna get stuck in the elevator, sure. okay, right? And then the other questions you can ask is, uh, what's the worst that's going to happen or what's the, the, the outcome that I'm, uh, I'm most afraid of? Right. And uh, could I manage that? How could I cope with that, okay? Yeah. okay. Are you ready to take that first step? You don't have to even go down in it. Just, I'm asking you to put a step on the elevator. If you come with me, Dr. Ross. Of course I'll come with you. Right. Come on out, he's right through here. And as we do this, be bold, be strong. Okay, yeah. superwoman. Superwoman, it's important. But are you feeling any of those? I'm starting to get slight, uh, just the thought of it's making me a little nervous, yeah. You yeah, there's butterflies in your stomach? Yes, feel butterflies, I feel my knees are getting that weak feeling, that sensation, and, and um, my heart. My heart goes a little Flitter, bit. flutter. And this question that Dr. Farchione asked about, w w is it really a bad thing if the elevator were to get stuck for a few minutes? Have you thought about that? Um, no, I haven't really thought of because I try to avoid that thought, even though that's the biggest thought, is that it's getting stuck, but. All right, come around here. Okay. So here we are at the elevator. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's a pretty big elevator. Okay. And all I'm gonna ask you to do is take a step back Onto that ledge, but yeah, if we, well, oh I promise boy, you won't oh move. Boy. Oh boy, okay. Todd, you can join that's us. That's great, yeah. Okay. No, that's perfect. It's a good place to, to stop for a second. So walk us through right. what you think would be an appropriate next step, because we gotta challenge those assumptions. Yeah. So we can try to challenge that a little bit. You okay. said one of the primary fears that you have is that the elevator will get stuck. Right, okay. right. What reason do you have to believe that the elevator is going to get stuck? What evidence do you have to suggest that it's going to get stuck? Well, when I was a little child with my mom, I actually did get stuck on an elevator, okay. mm -hmm. so. How long were you stuck for? I would say about a good half hour. Good yeah. half hour. And this is one of the ways that fears can get established for people. They have mm -hmm. a bad experience, yeah. and then they become frightened uh, later on, you know, or just on an ongoing basis, they become afraid. Yeah. Um, you know, so, okay. And how long was it? I'm sorry. Half about hour. a half hour. Half hour. Okay. Minutes, and then yeah. what happened? And we, I just remember people around me, you know, at that time, the fear didn't develop inside of me, but yeah. I just remember looking at the expressions of all the adults around right. me, including my mom, who was like my, my hero, mm -hmm. and seeing the way they all were so afraid and yeah. so panic-stricken, and that just left such an impression upon me. Yeah. So, there's the, there's yeah. the bad experience That's right there. Exactly, you can see it yeah. coming up. I can see but it well. I, I think about this and I say, you know, as, as adults, mm -hmm. if you're in an elevator for half an hour, besides losing a half hour of time, mm -hmm. you know, you, you didn't go in any uh, way into danger. No, no, I really didn't. No. So thinking about that, True. would you take a little further step into the elevator? I promise it's not going to move till you tell me to. Okay. All right. You have your stethoscope handy. Have everything handy for you. All right. Okay. okay. Now, what would I need to do to make you comfortable? if I were to actually just press this button and take us just one flight inside the elevator. Oh boy, that might be a bit too much, I don't know. Um, I'm not gonna force you. It, you, you have to drive this. You have to actually want this to happen so much that it overwhelms the fear you have. Whether it's irrational or not doesn't okay. frankly matter. Well, I think you'll agree with me that half yes. an hour in an elevator too. wouldn't be the worst case scenario. There's lots of worst things that happen every day. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. The thing you is, is you did manage. I, I mean, did you coped with it, it at that time, and you would cope with it again. Thinking of it that way, I think I think I can try. I, I, think I feel I your hands try. trembling. <laughs> <laughs> Come on back. I step into the elevator. We get safely away from the doors. Okay. All right. Okay. So, with your permission, I'm going to I'm going to hit that button. Okay. 
okay? And you're staying with I'm me. I promise you I'm really not going anywhere. We're only going one flight. Okay. One flight, all right? Okay. Here goes. Okay, thank I'm you. Right. There we are. Now, the door's closing. I know that's scary. The door's closing. I know that was a big step. You feel it's moving. That's pretty. Make sure you're pretty. That's okay. Deep breath. Oh. Oh, my. <laughs> that feel good? Come on out. Come on oh, out. Wow. We don't want it to close again. One flight's enough. Oh, my. Oh, my. Doesn't that feel so free? Feels free. free. I feel free. <laughs> God bless you. God bless you. Thank, Thank you, Todd. You. That's great. I, I love Thank all you. the work you do. Thank, Thank you. you very much. I hope it's helpful, Thank folks. You. Simple steps. Get past those fears. Embrace them. Yes. And you'll find so much freedom on the other side. We'll be right back. Coming up, can you lose weight in just one specific area? Is it true the more you sweat, the more you burn? Think you can separate fact from fiction when it comes to fitness? We're clearing up all the confusion, the most common fitness misconceptions. Coming up next. Clutter can cause stress, chaos, and obesity. It's time to clear out the clutter and feel good again. See how a simple soda cap or even a clothespin can change your life. All new Oz. That's coming up tomorrow. Think you can separate fact from fiction when it comes to getting fit? Well, you may be surprised to find out how much of what you've been told is fiction. Here to clear up the confusion on behalf of our trusted sponsorship partner, USANA Health Sciences, is celebrity fitness trainer, Kathy Taylor. <laughs> Welcome to the show. Thank you. You have trained some of the biggest celebs out there. What do you think is the biggest misconception about our bodies? You know, it's really about, um, it's about time. People think they don't have time to put exercise into their bodies. And I'm here to say everybody has time because exercise is cumulative. So even if you do a little bit here and there throughout your day, mm -hmm. that still counts at the end of the day. So to me, time is not a, a good enough excuse. Right. Let's debunk some <laughs> other big misconceptions. Audience, I need your help on these, you're gonna vote, ready? Is this statement a fact or fiction? You can lose weight in the specific area you want. Fiction. A lot of folks say, mix, all right. I actually heard a lot of loud voices saying fiction, which is correct, it's correct. Unfortunately, you cannot choose where you want to lose weight. There's no such thing as spot reducing fat. The key is a combination of cardio and strength training. So give me an idea of an exercise we can all do that builds up our heart rate, builds up the muscles too, so we can get rid of the fat in our body. Well, I love, this is really basic, and it's so old fashioned. In fact, everybody probably will know exactly what I'm gonna show, right. is a jumping jack. A jumping jack. It's so traditional, but it's one of the best exercises because it involves a lot of large muscles. So you get your quads, your hamstrings, your glutes, and then when you add your arms, you've got upper body, you pull your core in, so it's a total body. So you're getting a lot of heart rate, depending on how intense you do it. So if someone doesn't want to do a jumping jack, you can modify and still get the results. Right. So stepping out to the side and aggressively arms up over the head. Aggressively. Arms. Aggressive, <laughs> aggressive, right? And then if you want to add that jump and add the impact, then you do it, bouncing out. Now, I noticed when you do it, your, your knees are really out. Very that important for the knees to track out over the toes. Women tend to go in. You want to make sure that that body position is correct so you're using more of the muscle. And how many do you have to do? Well, like I said, exercise is cumulative. You could do a minute four or five times a day. We all have time for that, right? A yeah. minute? Yeah. So it works, the heart rate's up, and it's excellent. All right, here's a question that Donna posted on social media. She says, I heard the more you sweat, the more you burn. Is this fact or fiction? What do you guys think, audience? Ooh. This is more mixed, more mixed. I'm hearing both the correct answer, though I heard from over here. Fiction. It's fiction. It's fiction. <laughs> Absolutely fiction. fiction. Why is that? Not true. Well, sweating really is not an indicator of how hard you're working. Sweating really is just your body cooling off. It's a you know, biological reaction. When we get hot, we sweat. It's not determined how hard we're working. Heart rate does that. Sure. So really tracking your heart rate. You can wear a monitor. You can take your pulse. Seeing how hard you're working is a better indicator of that caloric burn. They used to put us in sweatsuits when I was young to get me to sweat more, but a waste of time. I just sweated. Yeah. No benefit. <laughs> and probably loses a lot of right. electrolytes. <laughs> Let's get to one more. I know that Michelle in the audience had a question about eating and working out. How are you, Michelle? I'm good. Good to see you. Hi. Good. Take it away. What's your question? Well, I heard that if I eat a little bit before I work out, that it'll burn fat. Is that fact or fiction? 
So just for the audience, so I'll be clear on this. You say eating before a workout yes. helps you burn more fat. Is that fact or fiction? What do you guys think? That's fact. Fact. They're all saying fact. fact. They're all saying fact because they're right. It's fact. How'd you know that? How'd you know that? It is a fact. It's like a car needs gas, right? Exactly. To fill it up the right way. And if you work out on an empty stomach, it can cause problems because what ends up happening is you burn off calories, but you burn off muscle too. You don't want to do that. Rule of thumb, 30 minutes before exercise, you want to have a little snack. Kathy, what's your meal? What's your go-to My go-to. Well, I love to do shakes because it's a little bit lighter. No one really wants to work out on that full stomach. Mm -hmm. And usually a guideline of about 30 minutes before to exercise. So I love this shake. In fact, it's called the Kathy's Colada. Kathy's uh, Colada. <laughs> Is there rum in it? No, not today. Not today. <laughs> <laughs> but we're going to start with your water. Mm -hmm. And then you're going to add in, this is the best part, is a protein. And this is the Nusana Nutrimeal Free, mm -hmm. and it's got about 15 grams of protein. It's got eight grams of fiber. We're gonna add some coconut milk, hence the colada. <laughs> if you've got a little coconut extract, you do not have to have it, but it adds that little punch more of, of flavor. You've got some pineapple, we've got strawberries, you're gonna add in the ice, here we are. Come on, a little strawberry. And then, and here we go. And it looks like you this. got it right here. Now this is great for before a workout. So what are the benefits of the product? Well, I love the Nutrimeal Free because it's clean and it's loaded with protein and it's free from fructose, soy, uh, it's gluten free. It's really a clean drink and it's something easy that anybody can make fast. That's the other thing, if we want stuff fast. So I love it. And the quality of ingredients are not to be surpassed. They're tested, they're proven, and uh, athletes take it. The biggest benefit for me is it tastes good. Thank you very much. It does much. taste awesome. Kathy's Colada. Yustana's products are used by over 700 professional and Olympic athletes around the world. You can go to DrRaj.com. Enter now for your chance to win one of the thousand bags of Yustana's Nutrimeal Free. And audience, I would never forget about you because you're so darn smart. You're all going home with Yustana's Nutrimeal Free too. We'll be right back. Coming up next, it's always misunderstood and always gets a bad rap. But it's not all butter and fried when it comes to foods of the South. There's a new wave of cooking happening. The whole country should be eating Southern food made healthy. Coming up next. Southern cooking, I love it, but it always does get a bad rap. Is a new wave, though, of healthy Southern cooking, and it's proven that it's not all about butter and deep-fried foods. They have got the health food secrets from the South that the whole country should be eating. Helper to help us explain is my good friend, Big Daddy. Come on out. Big Daddy, what's up, buddy? If you can be as healthy as him, but you eat what he's eating. So first of all, why do you think Southern food is so misunderstood? You know, a lot of folks are living off the past. You know, like the, the heavy gravies, a lot of the butter, a lot of the oil, deep frying, everything. And they forgot mm. that we've come to some new changes in cooking lately. So once they get past that and understand you can still have that Southern favorite that you like, but in a healthier way, I think that they would take that bad rap off of Southern foods. I like the idea. We're going to start with something everyone's heard of, black-eyed peas. Ooh. Now, most people don't know much about black-eyed peas, except that they taste good. So why do the rest of the country need to wake up and pay attention to black eyed peas? This is one of those good starchy foods that really hang in there and gives you some, some work ready for the, <laughs> for the rest of the meal. You know, if you come to my mom's house uh, around New Year's Eve, we always have like black eyed peas, cornbread, oh. rice, gravy, people that mm. are, it's a Southern thing that we do mm. in Jersey, but it's a <laughs> traditional thing that we do. It's supposed to be about wealth, but I think it's about being sleepy afterwards. But, <laughs> These black eyed peas are something that bring a lot of good uh, nutritional value to your diet. Also, they're very affordable. I mean, you can do a lot of things with black eyed peas besides just boiling them. You can make yourself a soup. Yep. You can make yourself a salad. You can actually do one of these Hop and John things. That's quinoa instead of rice. So normally it's bell peppers, onions, black mm. eyed peas, rice. And this right here is like a real simple soup. Bring in the black eyed peas. If you're a vegetarian, you want something healthy that's going to stick to the ribs. Add those black eyed peas with some fresh vegetables and thin, simple broth. Yep. I mean, that's flavor right there. These are absolutely fantastic. We're going to put these recipes on Oz.com. Can I point one thing out to everybody? They may not yes. know this. You know this. These aren't actually peas. They are? They're beans. 
They're beans. Beans. They're camouflaged as peas, but they're beans. Absolutely. And they don't give you much gas either, so I go this way. The next southern food, let's throw that in there. The next southern health food you'll talk about are, are the greens. There's so many greens. They're naturally grown in the south. I gotta say, I love the veggies. You're a fan of the green veggies as well. How come most of us aren't paying attention to these? You know what? I think that when it comes to like okra and collard greens, I know from a kid, my mother would, no, hey mom, I love you. Please tell her, <laughs> Doc. She'll listen he to loves you. you. Big Daddy loves you. Yes. But she would cook the greens. A lot of folks are used to cooking the greens forever. You know, they put them in a pot of water and they let them go on and on to get tender greens. When in reality, you don't have to do it because you're taking away the nutrients and you're actually making them real like dark green, not a, a good appealing look to the food. And same thing with okra. Okra is one of those things that's gotten a bad rap. Unless you hear about it in gumbo or you get it <laughs> fried with fish, no one wants to slime in okra. But they're forgetting that both of these help you know, reduce cholesterol. Yeah. They both are loaded with fiber, yeah. your iron, calcium. They both are really good for your diet. And if you really learn how to make them in a simple form, I love okra. I can I eat okra all I like day. the sliminess of it. Oh, I do like the slimy. Mm. Oh, man. Like oysters, but in a plant camouflage. Just, just do that, thing. Doc. It mm. just feels so good when you talk like that. <laughs> all right. Woo. Well, when, when I talk about okra, and my main thing is to convince people to like something that they don't like. So what I like to do is take the okra. <laughs> That's right. And, and fry it. Most folks like fry foods. Yeah. So instead of deep frying in heavy lard or fat, I'll just make a simple tempura. We got some flour, some cornstarch, and some cold seltzer. Mix those things together, lightly dredge your okra, put it in mm. that batter, oh. fry it 375. You got crispy okra with a nice dipping sauce because that, that could camouflage that sliminess that you have in your mind. Make a sauce on the side. These things are really, really good. And yeah. your sauces help a little bit. And what do you got for the collard greens? The collard greens. Doc, I'm going to put you to work. You know, when we're together, you always you got work. your hands on the food. <laughs> so I got a pot of boiling water. The one thing I want folks to know is really take your time to blanch your vegetables. You can blanch these greens in some boiling water, and that will really keep that nice, bright color. And then we can take them from that water. When you say blanch, how many minutes do you blanch? Blanch is really like 30 seconds, not sure. even minutes. All if right. you got your water at a hard boil, there you this go. You're ready. To, it's All in right. and out. And the one thing you want to do is, when you're done blanching, yeah. dry them really good because you don't want to add all that water and liquid Here, to the Here, let me have grease. your sleeve. <laughs> yeah. right. Not on my new shirt, Doc. <laughs> I got a no, new shirt too pretty. That's great. Yeah. All right. So then I put this in the ice? Put, put it in the ice. And you can do this in advance. I normally get a whole bunch of greens during the summertime, right before fall, or at the end of fall, rather, going into winter. Greens are dirt cheap. Buy them by the trash bag full. Get your kids and family in there. Blanch them. Put them in storage bags and freeze them, and then you'll have them for the whole year. Right. So now this is ready pretty much, right? Oh, that's ready. Now what we do to make it really ready and make it big daddy and full of flavor is I like to saute with a little olive oil, onions, garlic, black pepper, crushed red pepper. Anyone that loves greens loves that nice oh, bite. Oh. And when you got that crushed red pepper, mm -hmm. you have those onions that are caramelized and sweet. You got that little hit of garlic. It's like a good Barry White song that's going on right now. <laughs> it's American You know, and I like to just... Oh, Rick, drop it down. Yeah, drop it down, baby. Now, this right here is the secret. I'm all uh, about cutting back the salt. And I think a lot of times, even when we talk about Southern food, mm -hmm. it's because we have so much salt. Add a little red wine vinegar. I know a lot of folks out there like to use a little hot sauce. Yeah. Go crazy on the hot sauce if you want. But I would suggest going and trying out a little bit of red wine vinegar right at the end. And as you can see, these greens are bright. Is there no salt in this? No tastes, salt. It tastes really salty. No, no. That's just the flavor of the onions oh. and the garlic and the greens just cooking together. It doesn't take as long as you would think it would take because you're really just blanching, sauteing, and letting your vegetables sit. I love it. Now I want you to enjoy something for me. We got one of yes. our guests here. How are you? Hi. A true southern staple that's both refreshing and it's perfect because Stephanie flew all the way up from Texas. Is that right? I did. What part of Texas? Houston. All the way from Houston to share this little secret with us. I thank you for coming, by the way. Absolutely. What do you got? But what's the secret? Well, Southerners love their tea, right? Oh, we yes. love our tea, iced tea. But there are a lot of health benefits to tea. Um, it has antioxidants. It boosts your metabolism, and it can have less calories than sodas and juices. If you don't put too much sugar in there. That's the trick. So we also love our sweet tea. So what I recommend is using frozen berries mm. and then adding that slice of lemon. It ups the vitamin C, and it is so refreshing. Yeah, I'll toast oh, yeah. you on this. Toast toast you. Now, we're going to give you some feedback on this. Big Daddy's a big, you know, big chef. Oh, and okay. I love my tea. All right, Big Daddy. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, Put it me was on the worth beach. the trip. Oh, it was man. put on the beach. Very nicely done. This is 
unsweet sweet tea. It's the perfect, the non-sugary sweet tea. Right. It's the perfect thing. Thank you for making the trip. Big Daddy, we're, yeah. as always, wonderful always advice. Thank you can buy you. all these southern health food recipes at DrOz.com. And everyone wanted to get in on the fun, so take a look at two more bonus health foods from some of my friends down in Nashville and Atlanta. A southern staple down here, fried green tomatoes. Take your tomatoes, slice them pretty thick, and then dip them each in flour. And then I've got a yogurt milk mixture. You wanna coat it in that. You then finish it off with your panko breadcrumbs. You wanna put your tomatoes on a greased cookie sheet in the oven, 350 degrees, five to seven minutes on each side, flip them over. And then when they come out, you've got a healthier baked green tomato. Enjoy. You tried this, shrimp and grits. All you need is fresh shrimp, Parmesan cheese, salt and pepper, and these beautiful grits. That's your base. Layer it with some fresh spinach, about two cups. As for the sauce, hot sauce, chicken stock, a little bit of flour, salt and pepper, and you have a recipe you can whip up in 15, 20 minutes. Your family's gonna love it. I hope you try it. Clutter can cause stress, chaos, and obesity. It's time to clear out the clutter and feel good again. See how a simple soda cap or even a clothespin can change your life. All new Oz. That's coming up tomorrow. Did you know that I have the smartest audience in television? You knew that, right? Yeah. So just to prove it, I've got a test for the audience. You guys ready? Okay, everyone raise your left hand. Ooh, oh, still thinking? Yes, that's the right one. I saw a few of you pause out there. I even saw you, some of you doing the, you know, the make an L trick like this? Some of us, they can put your hands down now. Well, don't be hard on yourself. If you can't tell your right from your left, you're, you should know you are not alone. In fact, scientists think that about one in five people have the exact same problem. You can't tell your left from your right. It actually requires a pretty complex process in your brain to do that. In fact, it's said that even the genius Sigmund Freud couldn't tell his left from his right. So the next time you forget your left from your right, shrug it off and remember you're in very good company. All right, let's get to in case you missed it. First, Southern cooking always gets a bad rap, but not all of it is about butter and deep fried foods. There's a new wave of healthy Southern cooking you ought to know about. Now you may have thought that Southerners would never miss or fool with their sweet tea, but you would be wrong. The healthy new way to make southern sweet tea is to skip the spoonfuls of sugar and instead infuse it naturally with frozen berries and lemon. Here's the deal, the frozen berries add some sweetness, they keep the tea cool, they also give it a boost of vitamin C. You can find all the southern health food recipes including crazy good southern collard greens and super crispy tempura okra, which is my favorite on DrOz.com. Next, we tackled one of the most common phobias, elevators. And I have a trick that anyone can use if you're fearful of something. You ready to do this now? Do it with me. It's working for a lot of folks in many different areas. If you're afraid of getting on an elevator, public speaking, airplanes, even job interviews, it's called the power pose. It helps you send a message to your body to bring on your inner courage. Are you all ready? Stand up, we're gonna do a power pose. You can even change your body chemistry and give you the power energy you need to take on a challenge. You ready? Remember Superwoman? Yes. You're gonna stand like that, legs apart, hands on your waist, and just stand powerful. You like that? Oh, you look so powerful. They look strong and intimidating back there. While they're posing here, remember to be careful of dubious people online that make it seem like I'm endorsing their products because I don't. You see a full list of our, of our trusted sponsors and partners. You go to DrOz.com. I do feel more powerful. I'll see you next time. <laughs>